Brenda was coerced into marrying Cameron Kent for money by Richard Kent, who was a powerful figure in town. Cameron himself was unaware of such an arrangement, but just when Brenda thought things couldn't get worse for her, she sees a child call on Cameron's laptop. Brenda felt her hand tremble and believed the little boy on the call had dialed by mistake. Tell me, little friend, what's your father's name? Cameron. Brenda felt like a bucket of cold water had been poured on her and struggled to accept the fact that the man she had married had a son. I want to talk to Daddy. Is he home? Is this a dream? Have I become a stepmother at 22? Um, Cameron is not home. I will tell him to call you back when he comes back, okay? Okay. Brenda felt a pang of sympathy as she heard the little boy's voice and tried to keep him on the line. Don't hang up, little friend. What's your name? Brenda realized the little boy had no intention of telling her his name. And just as she was about to end the call, a strange voice caught her attention. Silas, what are you doing? Brenda suddenly became curious at the strange woman's voice and began to pace up and down the house as questions swarmed her head. I need to know who that woman is. Brenda enters the kitchen where Miss Lynn is preparing lunch. She helps Miss Lynn while trying to gather information. Miss Lynn, does Cameron have a kid? He does. Cameron has a little three-year-old son. His name is Silas. Despite being shocked by the news, Brenda tried her best to hide her emotions as she proceeded to ask further questions. Does Silas's mother live with Silas? No, Silas has been living with the old man these days. I've been working here for over two years since Silas was still just a little baby, but I have never seen his mother and Mr. Cameron has never mentioned her. Silas's situation is a little special, but he is such a cutie. I hope you get to know him well and be patient with him. What kind of special? Don't worry, you will know soon. Brenda decided to stop asking questions and instead begin to think about the kind of father Cameron was. Cameron, you're back just in time. A little boy called this morning. He said he was your son and wanted to see you. I understand. Thank you. Lunch is ready. Would you like to eat something? Okay, I'll be right back. Brenda felt excited as she saw Cameron come down the stairs. It felt like she had finally gotten him to agree to lunch, and that was a great start. Cameron, please sit down. Cameron moved far away from Brenda, but she did not mind and proceeded to join him where he sat. I made this chicken. It's pretty good. Try it. Brenda was forced to eat in silence as Cameron continued to completely ignore her. Hello? Who is this? I am Mr. Richard's butler, but my name is Jeffrey. What can I do for you? Miss Brenda, Mr. Richard Kent would like to see you. When are you free? Brenda could not believe one of the most powerful men in Los Angeles wanted to see her. She wondered if visiting him would be useful to improve her relationship with Cameron, or if his father would be worse than Cameron. Are you still there? Sure. Today I am free at any time. Brenda walked into the hall, and the first thing she saw was Mr. Richard making tea at a small wooden table. His aura was so strong, and she believed she could feel it in the air around him. Richard, hi, how are you? What did you call me? <laughs> Dad, I meant to call you Dad. Sit, daughter, please sit. You have great tea-making skills, Mr. Kent. I mean, Dad, it's so delicious. <laughs> I wanted to tell you something, Brenda. We didn't inform Cameron about the marriage beforehand. That's why he was so angry. Why didn't you discuss it with him before making a decision? If I had involved Cameron in the process, I would not have gotten you as my daughter. You work at Pacific Design as one of the designers, am I right? Do you like it? Yes, I love my job. I have been drawing for as long as I can remember. If I were to suggest that you join Kent Enterprises as the new editor-in-chief for the clothing line department, would you consider it? Brenda knew such a step in the fashion industry would plaster a smile on her face for the rest of her life, but she feared Cameron would hate the idea of them working in the same building. Don't worry. He can't make you leave should you accept the job. I accept. Brenda left the mansion deep in thought. She had decided to walk home, and she walked towards the gate. She saw a small boy playing with a Rubik's Cube and became transfixed. Brenda hadn't realized how long she had been staring at the little boy until he accidentally dropped the cube and almost fell down in an attempt to reach it. Are you okay? Brenda immediately felt a connection as she held the little boy. Is everything okay? I am sorry to interrupt, but you are needed inside. 
Your grandfather has asked for you. Brenda gently puts Silas down. I'm surprised he let you touch him, let alone hold him for so long. Silas is on the spectrum and keeps most people at arm's length. Brenda now understood why Miss Lynn had called Silas special. Although, to her, he looked like the sweetest kid. Hi, Silas. My name is Brenda. It's a pleasure to meet you. Cameron's eyes fix on Brenda's hand, still holding Silas's. It seems I underestimated how sneaky you are. Let go of my son and go home. As Cameron noticed what was going on, he immediately tried to stop Brenda from holding hands with his son. He blocked her path and they both ended up tumbling to the ground. Ouch! Brenda, I'm sure you're busy, so Silas and I will see you later. Cameron tried to ignore the sight of Brenda limping, but his ah. son kept tugging at his shirt, and so he had no choice but to carry her into the house. Scheming with my father to be married to me is one thing, but involving my son is another. If you think that getting yourself injured will garner any sympathy from me, you're wrong. Your intel is wrong. My new friendship with Silas is not about you. Don't cross me, Bree. You should go with him before he leaves without you. Are you hungry, Sai? Can I call you Sai? His name is Silas. When we get home, let's eat as much as we can, okay? Cameron observed Brenda's changing expressions during the car ride and became puzzled. He could not deny that she was pretty, but he still felt she was up to something sinister. Brenda was in her bathroom taking a shower when the lights go off. Her vision becomes distorted, and she is transported to a terrible memory where she almost loses her life. <laughs> Somebody save my baby! What happened to Brenda on that tragic night? And would she wake up from her nightmare? Hi, Brenda here. Hope you are loving Love Bargain. Keep following us as we release a new episode of Season 1 daily on YouTube. You can jump the queue and unlock all seasons of the audio series by installing the Pocket FM app now. Just click on the link in the description. To watch the next episode of Season 1, tap here, and to watch the full Season 1, click on the playlist.